I think we all know what I'm getting at. The donut, a.k.a. the torus, also known mathematically as hop vibrations, or vortex rings. A vortex ring, also called a toroidal vortex, is a torus-shaped vortex in a fluid. That is, a region where the fluid mostly spins around an imaginary axis line that forms a closed loop. The dominant flow in a vortex ring is said to be toroidal, more precisely, poloidal. Let's start with do at the root note in a musical scale. That will bring us back to do, oh, 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 do. It starts with do, and it all leads back to do. Now, just like leavened bread acting like yeast rising, let's expand on this topic. Time to make the donuts. Generally, it takes three things to make dough. Liquid, medium, and expander. The liquid would be the water, as magnetohydrodynamics. The flour would be the medium, life, matter, organisms. And the yeast would be the expander, the sun, stellar energy, or the source star. Now, why are we talking about this? Let's figure out how this all goes together. You have dough, the base of the music scale. You have doughnut the torus, you have doherty set, a forest of torises, or the fundamental first principle geometries of magnetohydrodynamics, and you have theodorian roots, self-organizing scaffolding of spectra in local star systems. It all starts with donuts nested inside of themselves, or for the sake of science, we will call them torises. What we're going to attempt to do here is describe donuts or torises on all scales, whilst we explore donuts in myriad academic fields at the same time. We'll start with torises in astronomy and space. How are Birkeland currents formed? Concentric circles nesting is what gives off the initial Bessel function from the sun, and this Bessel function repeating is what builds up the recursions or recursive nature of fractal patterns that we observe in reality. The recursions of these dilating nested torises is what builds up the subsequent size and ratios of the double-layered sheaths that make up the body of Birkeland currents. So the collimated structure of Birkeland currents is literally composed by counter-rotating torises. What's more is that this is how you get the helicity and double helical filaments that are observed everywhere in stellar formations. The helical filaments are a byproduct of the dilating toroidal nodes progressively expanding via projective geometry. That all sounds well and good, but how is matter birthed out of the sun from ionized gases? What is the self-organizing principle for this? Mainstream science will have you believe that matter cannot be created nor destroyed, but indeed, Matter is created and self-organizes in specific pathways. In fact, the Doherty set proofs that matter organizes according to a scalable metric of a process called Markland convection. Energy literally comes from the sun and self-organizes in these collimated sheaths and it is all being held up by nested donuts. A wheel within a wheel, with rims and spokes high and low inside and out. So if everything is composed or seems to be composed of torises and helices, it makes sense that there would be artists, philosophers, and scientists describing this reality that Don Scott, Christian Birkeland, Roger Penrose, the Doherty set, and Gorey and Markland are presenting before us. And indeed, there is. Take for example, William Thompson, who became better known as Lord Calvin. Calvin first conjectured that atoms might be vortices in the ether that pervades space. There's many more examples of donuts in space, including the Van Allen belts at the planetary scale. At the solar scale, we have the Hall cloud or Kuiper belt. 
At the galactic scale, we have ring galaxies. At the intergalactic scale, we have herbig hero objects, which clearly demonstrate cavitation. Cavitation is even scaffold upon toroidal induction. Then you also have Roger Penrose with his twister theories. Some donuts in math are referred to as hop vibrations. According to the Doherty set, the entirety of everything is composed of hierarchical and lowerarchical nested torises. Is there a scientific theory proposed that matches my findings? Yes, there is. And it all matches up with what Lord Calvin was proposing. Today, we have incredible intellects like Dr. Vladimir Ginsberg. His series of books is phenomenal and lays down the math of a helical and toroidal construction of our universe like no one else ever has. Here is a quote from Ginsberg as we pan through some of his work. The torus and the helix unique properties provide them with a capability to be the prime elements of nature, and that capacity, their potential role in nature, would be comparable with the role of the DNA double helices discovered by James Watson and Francis Crick in 1953. The DNA double helices contain genetic codes defining the properties of both organic entities and living organisms, whereas both the torus and helix contain genetic codes defining the properties of matter and radiation entities of the universe. Also similar are the locations of these codes. The genetic codes of DNA are located inside the cells of all organic entities and the living organisms, whereas the genetic codes of toruses and helices reside inside all elementary matter and radiation particles, the building blocks of the universe. The donut in biology. The dynamic dilating torus even plays a fundamental role in our souls. You might have heard the saying, the eyes are the window to the soul. Now what is the shape of an eye? The torus. So the torus is technically the gate to our soul. In fact, every sound that comes out of our mouths is a torus. Even baby babble is exercising the torus. Because the larynx is a series of three sphincters, which are themselves toroidal muscles. The lips are also a torus. The tongue can be thought of as the center of the torus, arranging the sounds of the chorus of the toruses. Letters in the Hebrew alphabet are all derived from a rotating torus, as the Muru Foundation shows. Birds, water spiders, fish, all use the vortex ring. We have to spend some time on Dr. Gabriel Kaliman. I will now read a quote by him while we look at some of his work, which happens to translate perfectly to my last Thunderbolts video, Magnetohydrodynamics. The transformation of the original concentric circles and regular polygons, along with the emergence of cyclospiraling centripetal and centrifugal currents, accompanying the dynamics of symmetrical waves propagated in the fluid subject to vibration demonstrates the close connection between the periodic time division and the geometric space structuring. Fluid matter thus becomes standing wave and therefore animated geometry. Vibrations, as the fluctuation in time and space, perpetually propagated stimulus in the elastic medium becomes visible once with the penetration into the liquid corpus which takes over, structuring itself in surprising standing geometries. Matter liquid, or liquid matter, a permissive receptacle of spatial temporal fluctuations of pressure depression, constructively modulates the harmonic interferences in the fluid mass, which thus becomes a symmetric structure animated by vibration. And this is talking about cymatics. The resulting geometries are formed on the scale of different ascending, descending frequencies, like a complex vibrational language that surprisingly interferes with ancestral symbolic sources. 
Therefore, the circle becomes the common source of planar polygonal successive series, the triangular, square, pentagonal symmetry, which tends to N radial spokes, just as in the three-dimensional, the fluid sphere becomes the primordial matrix, giving rise to regular polyhedra that oscillate in the cuboctahedron, icosahedron, dodecahedron, polyhedral complementaries, etc. Therefore, standing concentric circles become polygons from increasing noise intensity, while the sphere delivers polyhedral alternating oscillations. Vibrationally stimulated fluid, spheres, unify the indissoluble link between polyhedral antipodes as intermediate morphological stages of polyhedral structures, couples. More precisely, the liquid sphere becomes a cube, and the cube becomes an octahedron. The alternation fluctuating with the acoustic stimulus frequency. The torus is even prevalent in dancing. Our fingers dancing with mudras is steering and playing with donuts and tornadoes, steering ether and energy in many different directions and modalities. I hope it is clear that the donut, or the center of a donut, is the pillar of the Jed, as the Jedi pillar and the subsequent tori are always seen on the pillars, just as the dorji and the vajra. We've just skimmed the surface of how prevalent the torus or donut is on all scales. We could dive into the orbitals of hydrogen atoms and so much more, but for now, I think this is sufficient to digest and integrate deeper into the two-way living, pulsating vortex-based universe and out of the paradigm of the simulation. I hope it seems apparent that the Doherty set and the electric universe go hand in hand describing what brilliant minds all throughout history have been masterfully depicting through art, cymatics, science, math, religion, philosophy, and yes, even something as simple and delightful as pastry.